The sea has been host to some of the most fascinating creatures over the years. In this video, we're going to talk about the biggest biting teeth ever, an arthropod that was bigger than the average human adult, and a peculiar teeth arrangement. But first, let's start with... Dunkleosteus. This is a type of armored fish. Dunkleosteus preceded the famous dinosaurs by at least a hundred million years. It appeared during the Devonian period, when most animals weren't only small, but also significantly tamer. That's why Dunkleosteus was a special case. He was completely different from his peers, and it grew to well over 30 feet in length. Quite an imposing size at the time, and not just that. Being among significantly smaller opponents was apparently not enough, so the fish had to develop one of the craziest bite forces at over 8,000 pounds per square inch. This brings it closer to the likes of the T-Rex and Megalodon, two of the most powerful predators to ever roam the ocean and land. The big size, though, turned out to be the end of the Dunkleosteus during the Carboniferous period, when marine oxygen levels dropped drastically, favoring animals that weighed far less. Sarcosuchus Crocodiles are big and vicious, but they come up short if we compare them to their extinct distant cousin, the Sarcosuchus. This beast could easily grow to over 30 feet and weigh in just at under 5 tons. For some perspective, the saltwater crocodile, which is the biggest croc species today, barely reaches a ton in weight and averages 17 feet in length. The size is still impressive, but it's nowhere near its extinct cousin. Sarcosuchus lived 113 million years ago in present-day Africa and South America, where it shared an ecosystem with dinosaurs. Given its impressive size, researchers reckon these colossal reptiles might have actually hunted the dinos and any other animals they came across due to their indiscriminate feeding habits. Frilled Sharks The frilled shark being on this list is a bit of a unique case. Unlike all the other animals in this video, this shark species is still alive and has remained unchanged for the past 80 million years, and it's remarkably different from most sharks today. Its dark brown color and eel-like body in particular set it apart from the tiger and bull sharks of this world. That's why those who know of it usually refer to it as a living fossil. With only two known species, the frilled shark is found in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, living at varying depths depending on the region. Generally, though, it doesn't go below 3,900 feet. Here it feeds on smaller sharks, other fish, and cephalopods like octopuses and squids. The classic feeding move is a swallow prey hole thanks to its highly flexible jaws. The 300 recurved teeth lining both jaws ensure the filled shark doesn't let a potential meal escape. Predator X Predator X became an instant media hit when bits of its remains were uncovered back in 2009. Before paleontologists could come up with a description, news outlets had already assigned the monster god status, going as far as christening it the most fearsome animal to ever swim the oceans. Researchers, on the other hand, had a lot of figuring out to do because they were working with very tiny proportions of the supposedly formidable predator. Uncovered in Norway, regular freezing and thawing in the country over the years had dealt serious destruction to the fossils by the time researchers found them. Luckily, though, they had some material to work with. Officially named Pylosaurus funke, the reptile was definitely a behemoth. One of the skulls was estimated to have been anywhere from 6 to 8 feet long, which means the reptile was a considerable size. Estimates are still a bit shaky, but some researchers place the overall length of Predator X between 33 and 42 feet. Leviathan Named after the biblical sea monster Leviathan, Leviathan has been known to science since 2010. And much like its biblical counterpart, it was one heck of a beast. Averaging between 44 and 57 feet long, it remains one of the biggest predators to ever exist. Reportedly, the last one sank to the bottom of the sea about 12 million years ago. While its size is more akin to the modern-day sperm whale, Leviathan was remarkably more vicious. And that ultimately came down to one thing, its teeth. Sperm whales are huge, but their teeth are small for their size, and they don't even use them to feed. Leviathan, on the other hand, had some frighteningly large teeth that they didn't hesitate to put to work. Single tooth averaged about a foot long, by far the largest biting teeth of any known animal. You can imagine the extent of the damage that this monster inflicted on its prey. Regardless of size, those were some really deep and some fatal wounds. Liopleurodon A formidable predator from the Mesozoic era, Liopleurodon became popular in 1999 thanks to the BBC series Walking with Dinosaurs. The problem with the series, though, was that it grossly exaggerated the reptile's size. 
They mistakenly placed it at about 80 feet instead of the more conservative estimate of 30 feet. Bit of a difference there. Besides the impressive size, though, Lyle Pleuridon was a pretty good swimmer. Not as fast as the more evolved present-day marine hunters like great white sharks, but definitely fast enough to put their prey at a disadvantage. This could have been achieved perhaps by the beating action of the reptile's two pairs of flippers that were long, broad, and flat. This obviously came in handy during hunting sessions, which would be assisted by the Lyopleurodon's forward-facing nostrils and a well-developed sense of smell. Chronosaurus The Chronosaurus once swam across parts of Australia in the early Cretaceous period, about 145 to 100 million years ago. The land here during this period was remarkably cold with near-freezing temperatures that was under the Iramaka Sea. Chronosaurus was once thought to have been over 40 feet long, but the estimates were later corrected after it was discovered that the initial projection had included more vertebrae than the animal could have had. Today, most researchers agree that the reptile's length might have fallen between 30 and 36 feet. A considerable chunk of this, almost 8 feet, consisted of the skull, making the head proportionately large in comparison to the overall body length. The reptile was an active and fast swimmer, as evidence suggests it had some particularly large and powerful swimming muscles. These muscles were further supported in their function by belly ribs and equally strong limb girdles. Shastasaurus A lot of our prehistoric sea creatures here were big and or had some frighteningly sharp teeth. At 70 feet long, the Shastasaurus was big too, but scientists believe it didn't have teeth. The fact that it was carnivorous opens up the question of how exactly it was able to go around hunting, though. The general consensus was that it was a suction feeder, rapidly opening its mouth and then pulling back its tongue. This would suddenly draw water in alongside the target prey. The theory is supported by the creature's short snout and an enlarged skull at the point where jaw-opening muscles were attached, making it much easier for rapid mouth opening. The same hunting tactic had been observed in a good deal of whales, and while the whales still have teeth, they're significantly reduced, which also kind of supports the theory. Plesiosaur Plesiosaurs went extinct some 66 million years ago. This is more than likely due to the comet or asteroid impact and what's referred to as the Cretaceous Palagene Extinction Event. Going by the present fossil records, there were at least a hundred species of these marine reptiles, known for their short tail and a broad, flat body. Naturally, the size varied across the order, with some averaging a little under 5 feet in length, while the biggest ones could grow to as much as 50. Their four limbs were modified into flippers that helped the reptiles move around. The flippers are totally normal for a good deal of aquatic animals, but what isn't, though, is the fact that the plesiosaurs use all four flippers for locomotion while reserving the tail for only changing direction. Unlike present-day reptiles, the plesiosaurs gave birth instead of laying eggs and might have been warm-blooded as well. Helicoprion While a lot of these prehistoric beasts are quite fascinating, few can match the level of intrigue that the Helicoprion roused in the scientific community when its fossil was first discovered back in the late 19th century. Its identity remained a mystery for some time, as researchers had only one part to work with, these weird-looking spirally arranged teeth. Christian tooth whirls, it wasn't very clear where this cluster would fit in an animal, and was even once suggested that it probably grew on the nose. As later studies revealed, though, the toothy thing was actually part of the lower jaw of the shark-like helicoprion. The presence of the whirl meant this prehistoric fish couldn't have snacked on vertebrates or any other hard-shelled animals, so it's very likely that its diet was strictly soft-bodied organisms at that time. As per extrapolations from the size of these whirls, the bizarre-looking fish could have grown to between 16 and 26 feet. Dacosaurus. While things like the size, teeth formation, and diet have been established, there's still a lot to look into as far as Dacosaurus is concerned. For instance, it's still unclear the exact method this 16-foot marine reptile used to reproduce. Researchers believed it couldn't have laid eggs since they haven't found any evidence that points to this, like a nest or some eggshells. That means Dacosaurus likely gave birth, an assertion that raises further questions. If that was the case, did it give birth at sea or did it come ashore like seals? All we can do now is wait as paleontologists work out their magic. So far, though, we know that they were way better swimmers than their modern-day distant cousins, the crocodiles. Lead Sichthys Even though its exact size is highly contested, Lead Sichthys is considered to be the biggest fish known to man. Length estimates vary widely from some 20 feet all the way to a whopping 70. 
Part of the problem with nailing down a more refined range is the fact that much of the fish's skeleton was made of cartilage, which breaks down far easier compared to bones. Most of the estimates that are fronted are usually extrapolated from the skull bones. Size issues aside, though, we have a pretty good idea of the feeding patterns of the lead sickthus. Much like modern-day big fish, including the whale shark and basking shark, this monstrosity of a fish was a suspension feeder. Thanks to gill rakers and his gill basket, it would easily trap and extract tiny organisms like zooplanktons as seawater passed over its gills. With a whopping 40,000 teeth, trapping enough organisms to maintain its huge size was certainly not a problem. Ammonites Ammonites went extinct around the same time as the dinos, about 66 million years ago. This was after they had survived the Permian extinction that was set off by volcanic activity, eventually killing 96% of the planet's species. Scientists believe a good deal of this species were eliminated in this event, but the remaining species would eventually blow up in numbers millions of years later. Thus far, scientists have identified over 10,000 species of these prehistoric mollusks, proving that the group was quite diverse. As you'd expect, the animals came in all sorts of sizes, from less than an inch wide all the way to 9 feet. Whatever the size, though, each ammonite had a shell, which, of course, is the only part that fossilized. Their shells varied a bit in shape, but most of them were coiled in such a way that the individual spirals progressively increased in diameter the further away they were from the center. Elasmosaurus Once a revered resident in North America, Elasmosaurus occupies a special place in the study of prehistoric creatures for a couple of reasons. For starters, it was among the first marine reptiles we described when it was discovered in 1867 near Fort Wallace in Kansas. More importantly, though, it fueled what was later referred to as the Bone Wars, a fossil hunting rivalry between two of the most important American paleontologists, Edward Cope and Charles Marsh. Thanks to this rivalry, over 130 new species of dinosaur were discovered and consequently described. Anyway, back to Elasmosaurus. Its most notable feature was the neck, which at 23 feet long made up most of the reptile's 34-foot-long body. Despite the exaggerated neck length, though, scientists speculate the animal probably kept it below the water's surface most of the time given its sheer weight. Tylosaurus Dating back to the late Cretaceous, the Tylosaurus was part of a larger group of marine reptiles called Mosasaur, most known for their immense sizes. Tylosaurus was the biggest among them, averaging lengths of well over 45 feet, a size that effectively made it the top predator in its prehistoric marine ecosystem. As per its preserved stomach contents, the reptile appeared to have had a sweet tooth for fish. That being said, sharks, seabirds, plesiosaurs, and even other mosasaurs also routinely found themselves on the Tylosaurus' menu. Important to the reptile's hunting and general movement was its tail, significantly muscular, long, and vertically flattened. With a bit of waving it around, this massive mosasaur would ambush its victims just in time before they even knew they were in danger. Of course, its paddle-like limbs also helped a great deal, especially when it came to changing direction. Critogirina Critogirina was pretty much identical to present-day great white sharks, just a bit bigger and far more vicious. It weighed about 5 tons and could grow to 26 feet long, making it one of the largest sharks of the time. While its size was certainly a huge advantage when it came to hunting, the teeth were just as effective. Naturally, they were also significantly big, averaging at least 3 inches, which is definitely something any animal wouldn't want to deal with. Besides being huge, the teeth were also hardened by a thick layer of enamel that made them quite efficient in stabbing and slicing prey. Important to this shark's hunting toolbox was its swimming speed. Despite the crushing weight it had to haul around, it could comfortably clock in at 43 miles per hour, which was on the higher end for most sharks at the time. According to researchers, it used these speeds to lunge at prey, consequently dealing some serious damage in the process. Basilosaurus The Basilosaurus was the first prehistoric whale known to science, although its name is a bit of a misnomer. The suffix saurus is ancient Greek for lizard, specifically used to describe a lot of the extinct prehistoric reptiles, which the Basilosaurus was initially assumed to belong to when it was first described in 1834. Like its modern-day relatives, it grew to an immense size and possibly was the largest animal during the Paleogene period. Averaging between 49 and 66 feet long, the so-called King Lizard could easily take on pretty much every animal in its ecosystem. As the top predator, the Basilosaurus preyed on other significantly large mammals, sharks, and other large fish. But unlike most whales today, it was an anguliform, meaning it was shaped like an eel. It also spent most of its time on the surface thanks to a marrow-filled backbone that provided buoyancy. Megalodon 
You all would have killed me if I didn't put this one in. Certainly one of the most popular prehistoric megafauna, while there's an obvious exaggeration in how they're portrayed in popular media, though. There really is no doubt that these sharks were big, though. According to estimates, most of them might have averaged between 60 and 80 feet, extremely monumental sizes by any standard. For perspective, the whale shark, which is the biggest modern era shark, grows to just about 33 feet on the extremely high end. It's still big, but comes up significantly short compared to the megalodon. That being said, the prehistoric shark's size is highly disputed. Being a shark, the megalodon's skeleton consisted of cartilage, which breaks down easily with time. This means coming up with a close enough reconstruction hasn't been very easy. Important to the whole process of studying the prehistoric monster has been aided mainly by its teeth, which averaged lengths of just over 7 inches. Any animal that fell into the megalodon's jaws definitely regretted the day it was born. Stethacanthus Described as shark-like, the Stethacanthus was significantly smaller than most of our prehistoric creatures here, growing to no more than 3 feet long and weighing less than 20 pounds. It was also presumably slower than a lot of swimmers back then and was probably a bottom feeder. That being said, it would occasionally chase down other, much slower marine animals when the chance arose. Most notable about the Stethacanthus was what researchers call the spine breast complex, a protrusion that formed a few inches away from the tails of sexually mature males. Researchers are still at pains trying to figure out the function of this protrusion. Some researchers have suggested that the spine brush complex could have been used to scare off potential predators by imitating the mouth of a much larger fish, while others maintain that it might have been used to attract mates, or it might have played a role in the mating process itself. Jackalopterus Who knew? Invertebrates too can be apex predators. The modern-day waters are plagued by the mysterious giant squid, but 400 million years ago, a creepy crawly, the Jackalopterus, ruled the seas. Well, technically, it wasn't really a marine animal, as fossil records show that the long-gone creature made its home in rivers and lakes. In these environments, it could feed on any and every animal it came across, mainly due to its size advantage. With lengths of between 7.5 to 8.5 feet, it was clearly way bigger than the biggest humans, and it remains the largest arthropod ever discovered, beating out the equally creepy Arthroplora millipedes. How and why the Jackalopterus grew to such immense size is still unclear. But researchers speculate it could have something to do with a lack of competition from vertebrates, seeing as the arthropods evolved pretty much alone. See you all next time!